Welcome back to Rich Words Music, where today we're doing a friendly guitar comparison between this, the 2022 Yamaha Revstar Element RSE20 model, and this, my 2014 Epiphone Les Paul Traditional Pro. Now, why am I comparing these two guitars? Well, firstly, because quite a few of you have asked me to do it, and secondly, because when I made my dedicated video about the Revstar, I said in that video, yep, it's kind of similar to a Les Paul in some ways, but it's also totally its own thing. And so what I wanted to do in this video was check it out and see how close and how far apart these two guitars are on some other things. And what I also thought was that these two guitars are rather similar when it comes to budget points. So if you're someone in 2022 looking for something like an Epiphone Les Paul, those are going to set you back about $500 or 450, 500 euros. And the Revstar Element guitars cost about $500 or just under 500 euros. So very similar in terms of price points. But what I'm going to do in the rest of this video is first take you quickly through the specs and the features of the guitars. Then we're going to play them in a variety of different styles from clean to all out metal to see how they sound and to see how they compare to one another. And at the end, I'll tell you a little bit more about my experiences of having these two guitars at home for quite a while, testing them, playing them thoroughly, telling you how they feel and sound and play and perform, and which one I think might be more worth your money at the end of the day. So stick around for that, but first, let's get to those specifications and features. So this is the 2022 Yamaha Revstar Element model, the RSE20, and this specific guitar comes in the rather magnificent and eye-catching shade of neon yellow. I was a little bit shocked when Yamaha sent me this guitar and it came out of the box looking this bright, but I've actually come to love it in the weeks since I've had it. It's so different from the other guitars that I've got. And you can get the Element model in different shades too, slightly less eye-catching. It comes in swift blue, it comes in black, it comes in white, or it comes in red copper. So there are different options available but let me tell you now about the specs and the features and as I talk you'll probably notice that some of these sound very similar to what you're going to hear about on the Epiphone Les Paul which is coming next. So underneath this finish we have a mahogany body and it's a chambered body too. I'll put a little picture from the Yamaha website of the chambering so you can see the holes that have been cut throughout the body and what that does is help reduce the weight of the guitar, it gives you better balance to the body and it also gives this guitar a really nice acoustic ring to it as well so that's also a pretty cool thing if you're looking for a sofa guitar just to noodle away on when you're watching TV in the evening or something like that. On the body itself then it's a fairly stripped back affair because the Revstars are simplish rock and roll machines. We've got two Yamaha VH3 humbuckers, a three-way selector switch, a master volume control and a master tone control. Now the tone control has an extra feature, pull it up to turn on the dry switch. And what the dry switch is, is a high pass filter. So it basically filters out unwanted flabbiness and wooliness in the low end of your tone. Often with humbucker guitars, when you up the gain, you get a lot more low end and sometimes it's a bit too much. So the dry switch is a high pass filter that will take out some of that if you don't want it. It's not really a coil split, but I do find that it gives you more sparkly top end as well. So it's a pretty cool thing to have and you're going to hear that in some of the sound samples coming up. Here we also have a pretty Les Paul-esque stop bar tailpiece and a tunematic type bridge. And if we move up to the neck here, you'll also hear some more Gibson Les Paul sort of specific specifications. So it's a 24.75 inch scale length, 628 millimeters, the same as a Les Paul. We've got 22 frets here, they're jumbo frets, so pretty modern feeling bigger than most standard Les Paul frets. It's a 12 inch fingerboard radius, so fairly flat. It's a rosewood fingerboard, so very cool at this price point. Moving up to the headstock, we have this rather cool Yamaha Revstar headstock, which I really do like, and Yamaha branded tuners on the back. Now the back of the neck is a satin finish and the neck profile is a C shape. It's a medium to slightly chunky C. It's very comfy in the hand. I really like the shape of this neck. The body is gloss and the neck is satin. So it's a really cool playing guitar. This is the Yamaha 2022 Revstar Element. So those are the specs of that guitar. And now let's pick up the Les Paul Traditional Pro. So this is my 2014 Epiphone Les Paul Traditional Pro, and this is one of my two main guitars, along with my Fender Telecaster. And I got this guitar new in 2014, and it cost me 330 euros, and that included a very good Epiphone hard case. Now, I think you've got no chance of finding a new Epiphone Les Paul for that kind of money in 2022. And in fact, a new Epiphone Les Paul today will cost you something similar to the Revstar Element. But what about the 2014 model then? What specs do we have here? Well, we have a mahogany body and a flame maple top 
top with this lovely ocean blue finish on the top of the guitar here. It's a gloss finish to the front of the body, but the back and sides are black and they are satin finished, as is the back of the neck. On the body itself, we have two Epiphone Pro Bucker Zebra pickups, a three-way selector switch, two volume controls, two tone controls, and you actually pull up each of the volume controls to split the coils on the humbuckers. So this is a very versatile guitar indeed. Moving up to the neck and we're in traditional Les Paul territory. So it's a pretty chunky C-shaped neck, very similar in terms of feel to the Revstar elements actually. Satin finished, as I said, really, really nice. I've pretty much come to feel at home on this guitar in the seven years since I've had it. I've played it very extensively and it feels like home. So we've got a 22 fret rosewood fingerboard here. The frets on the Epiphone a medium jumbo, so a little bit smaller than those of the Revstar. And I've actually had a bone nut installed on this guitar some point in the past, about two or three years ago, I think, and it made a huge difference to the guitar. This is the older Epiphone headstock there, and we have six Grover tuners on the back of the headstock. So that's the 2014 Epiphone Les Paul Traditional Pro, and this is the 2022 Yamaha Revstar Element. Similar guitars in many ways then, but do they sound similar or do they sound different? Well, that's what we're going to find out now because we're going to play them in as many different styles and sound settings as we can. So my rig for today is going to be my Hughes and Kettner Black Spirit 200 head, and we'll start on the Amps Clean Channel. We'll play some folk and some pop and a little bit of indie, I think, on the Clean Channel. Then we'll go up to the Amps Crunch Channel and play some classic rock and see how these humbuckers sing with some low and medium over drive from the amp. After that, I'll go back to the amp's clean channel and switch on my Gria Lightspeed Overdrive, and we'll do a bit of indie on these two guitars because I love playing indie, and I think these guitars are both very well suited to that genre. After that, we'll get a little bit heavier. We'll go up to the amp's lead channel, and we'll play some harder rock, some progressive rock, some punk, some alt rock, stuff like that. And at the end, it's back to the amp's clean channel, and we'll engage my Rev G3 distortion pedal, tune the two guitars down to drop D, and see if they can do a bit of metal and a bit of chugging. Now we'll be on full humbucking mode on both of the guitars for the vast majority of this video, but when I do go to split coil mode on the Les Paul and dry switch mode on the Revstar, I will give you a note, a little text up in the corner of the picture, so if you have any problems knowing what's going on, it'll be written for you, no problems there. But ask me in the comments if you don't know what's going on at any point. Enough talking then, let's play the 2014 Epiphone Les Paul Traditional Pro and the 2022 Yamaha Revstar Element now, and we'll speak in a bit more detail about them afterwards. Thank mm -hmm. you.
Okay then, so that was the 2022 Yamaha Revstar Element up against my 2014 Epiphone Les Paul Traditional Pro, and I hope you enjoyed the playing and the tones. I want you to leave me a comment down there telling me which you preferred and why, because I'm really looking forward to hearing what you guys think, and because this video, making it, was a massive eye-opener for me. When I made the specific Revstar video that you can see by clicking the link up there after you've watched this one, I did say that the Revstar was very much its own thing, and I still believe that to be true, but actually, having played the two guitars and a would them like this and heard the riffs back to back with the two guitars with the same settings on the amps and the pedals, I really do think that there are some very large similarities between the Revstar and the Les Paul. And if you're shopping for that kind of a guitar, double humbuckers, mahogany body, that kind of thing, and you're about 500 euros or dollars for your price point, these are two that you really need to look at. So let me tell you a little bit more about my opinions of the two guitars. And what I'm going to do is go through the different categories of how you would rate a guitar really and see if we can find which one might be objectively or subjectively the better guitar. But this is all my opinions and of course your mileage may vary. So let's start with the build quality and the hardware of the two guitars. But let me start off by reminding you that the Epiphone Les Paul is seven or eight years old now. It's had thousands of hours of playing time. It's had a few separate setups over that time. It's had a bone nut fitted and my tech Uva is excellent. So this guitar plays out of its skin. However, the Yamaha 2022 Revstar came to me from Yamaha not specially set up or anything like that, and also played great straight out of the box. Of course, like any new guitar, it could benefit from a setup. And actually at the moment, my Les Paul is due another setup, so I'll be calling you over at some point soon to get that sorted. But with the Revstar, everything came great straight out of the box. The action and intonation were totally fine. Everything played well. The frets seem to have been well done. No problems there whatsoever. I do think the guitar could benefit from a bone nut as well at some point to aid the tuning stability, but that is kind of something that you don't necessarily have to have. I also think that the Yamaha tuners on this guitar are really absolutely fine. They do their job well. They're just as good in terms of performance as the Grovers on the Epiphone. When we come down to the body, this being a Yamaha, it's just like all the other Yamahas I've ever played. Nothing to fault whatsoever when it comes to the parts or the electronics. The pots are totally fine and not crackly. The dry switch always worked. The selector switch, totally fine. The humbuckers did their thing, no problems whatsoever. And the guitar build is pretty much flawed. And I have to say again, the 2014 Epiphone Les Paul is also in that shape with a few bashes that I've given it over the years since I've been playing it. So in terms of build quality and hardware then, I feel like they're at a pretty level playing field. I guess the one thing you could say is, is that if you prefer Grover tuners, then you're probably going to say that you would prefer the Epiphone. But for me, in practice, having used the Epiphone tuners too, they're as good as the Grovers. I guess another thing we should just mention is the weights of the guitars. Now these being mahogany bodies, we can expect chunky beasts and they both are fairly chunky. Now they're not overly heavy. I do have to admit that I thought the Revstar would be a little bit lighter because it's chambered and it's not a super light guitar. It weighs 3.58 kilograms, which is about seven pounds 14. So it's a hefty chunk. It's not too heavy by any means, but because it's so chambered, I had expected it to be a little bit lighter. It is still a little bit lighter than the Epiphone Les Paul. Now the Les Paul with its fully unchambered mahogany body and its flame maple top comes in at 3.87 kilograms, which is about eight pounds eight and a bit in American measurements. So both decent weights, not super back breakers like some Les Pauls are. Both play great standing up or sitting down. So really cool there, but it's just something that I wanted to mention here. Let's also talk about the playability very briefly. This is something that is very personal to every guitar player and we all have our own preferences when it comes to how a guitar plays. But when it comes to the Revstar and the Les Paul, they are fairly different in this regard. Now, when it comes to the body shapes and sizes, you can see that you 
you've got a double cutaway on the Revstar and also a hefty tummy cut on the back of the instrument too. That makes it perhaps a little bit more comfortable to have up against your rib cage. It's also a thinner body and it's slightly larger overall along the lower bout. The double cutaway also gives you a little bit extra fret access up at the dusty end if that's something that you need. So maybe consider thinking about that as well. And also the transition between the body and the neck aids you in that regard. Now when we come to the two necks on the guitars we're actually in fairly similar territory. They feel very similar to me. They're both satin, they're both C-shape and they're both relatively chunky. Now the fretboard radius on the Revstar is 12 inches, on the Epiphone Les Paul it's 14. In reality you're not really going to feel the difference. What you might feel a difference between is the fret sizes. Now it's jumbo frets on the Revstar and medium jumbos on the Epiphone Les Paul. Again it's a personal preference thing but for me both these necks play absolutely fantastically and while I'm more personally used to playing medium jumbo frets I love the jumbo frets on the Revstar so I'm looking forward to getting used to these more in future. In terms of playability then these two guitars are pretty much level for me but you'll have to make your own personal choice on that. And so the final thing that we have to talk about when it comes to the direct comparison between these two guitars is the sounds. And this was a massive eye-opener for me because when I came into making this video I expected the two guitars to have pronounced differences when it came to different settings, different styles, different genres of music. I mean they're both mahogany bodies, they both have humbuckers, but there are other differences and they are different humbuckers made by two different companies. So I had expected us to hear more differences than we actually do. If you close your eyes and listen to some of the riffs, be it clean, crunchy or distorted, you can almost not tell the difference between the guitars in some of the settings. So that was a massive eye or should I say ear opener for me. These guitars really do sound similar in a lot of contexts. Now that actually is a plus point for both of them I think because they're both exceptionally versatile and they both cover so many different grounds, so many different styles of music well as well. In terms of ultimate versatility I guess I'd have to give it to the Epiphone in that way because you do have the genuine coil splits on that guitar, you can split the humbuckers down to single coils and you really do get twangy Telecaster-esque tones out of that guitar if that's what you want. You can't quite get those with the Revstar but the dry switch is a fabulous invention and I really really do like it and find myself playing the guitar with the dry switch activated more often than not when I'm just noodling around at home. Now that doesn't quite give you full-on single coil tones but it gives you a lot more clarity. You hear every one of the six notes in a distorted bar chord when you have the dry switch on. It really tightens up the tone of the Revstar so I really really like that. When it comes to the voices of the humbuckers then on both guitars well when we were on the clean sounds I think that I started to notice a little bit of a subtle aggression in the Epiphone which is not there in the Revstar. So the Epiphone just wants to go a bit more, they're slightly hotter humbuckers. I hear kind of more upper mids and more highs to the tone. It's just a more modern and aggressive sounding guitar for clean tones. When we went up to classic rock I thought the guitars sounded pretty much identical but again just a slight hint of more aggression in the Epiphone. When we actually went back down to using the Greer Lightspeed and did the indie stuff though I preferred the Revstar. It just seemed to have more of a clarity to it and it just seemed to work better for that style of music at least how I choose to play play it anyway. When we went back up to high again though, up to the lead channel of the amp, the two guitars sounded very, very similar. I do think that at that point the Revstar has a little bit more clarity and the more gain that you put into the sound, the more low end oomph the Epiphone has. And that also contributes to the Epiphone sounding a bit less clear overall than the Revstar. But for any kind of genre, any kind of music that we played, both of these guitars are fantastic. And again, it comes down to personal taste, what you prefer in terms of tightness for metal, and in terms of aggression and in terms of warmth when it comes to cleaner, more classic tones. So again, try them both out if you could. But for me, if I was going to pick one guitar specifically only for versatility, I would choose the Epiphone. But if I was going to pick a newer one to do many styles of rock and roll, indie, classic rock and clean stuff, the kind of stuff that I play, I think I might give the edge to the Yamaha Revstar. At the end of the day then, which is the better guitar? Which one do I prefer and which should you buy? Well this might be a little bit of a cop-out answer but I would say you really have to choose which one is best for you. Now for me personally there's a number of factors that contribute to me choosing which one I prefer. I do have to again introduce a caveat here and say that I've owned my 2014 Epiphone Les Paul since new. I've had it going on for eight years now and it feels like home for me. I've spent so many days and hours playing with it in so many different settings and that guitar is just, it's an extension of my body when I strap it on, you know, it really feels natural in my hand. However, the Revstar I've had for a couple of weeks, three or four weeks now, and it also feels great straight out of the box. I'm really, really impressed with it. 
And I do have to say that although I like this neon yellow colour, had Yamaha sent me the Swift Blue version with the white racing stripe, they'd be having a very hard job to pry that guitar back out of my hands because I definitely would be wanting to keep it if it played as well as this specific instrument. Now we've talked about the different facets of the guitars and in terms of build quality I think they're both fairly similar. If you do want to specifically have Grover tuners you might want to pick an Epiphone but try the Yamaha tuners out because for me they're pretty much just as good. When it comes to build quality you might also consider the country of origin where these guitars are built as well. For me that's not much of a factor because I judge a guitar based on how it feels and plays and sounds when I'm actually playing it for myself but the Revstar element is made in Indonesia and the 2014 Epiphone Les Paul Traditional Pro was made in China so make of that what you will. In terms of the rest of the build quality they're both fairly similar. They're both great value for money. Both, of course, like any new guitar, benefit from setups. When it comes to the sounds, we've talked a lot about that and you've heard all of the different samples. But for me personally, again, ultimate versatility, it goes to the Epiphone because of the genuine coil split. But for my personal preferences in these recent months, I'm going to go with the Revstar. I'm just really liking what I hear from this guitar right now. And maybe it's part of the freshness of it for me, but I really do enjoy how this guitar sounds. And in terms of the playability, that's going to be a personal choice on your part. I love both of the setting necks on both of these two guitars. I'm getting to know and love these Revstar jumbo frets as well. But as I said, the Les Paul totally feels like home to me. When it comes to body sizes, again, if you want the chunky mahogany of the Les Paul, it's fatter and not quite as easy to tote as the Revstar in some contexts. The Revstar has better upper fret access if that's what you need as well. So consider that when making your decision. And one final point just for you to consider at the end of this video. I've been talking about and playing my 2014 Epiphone Les Paul here, but the 2014 models are of course different to the models that you can buy new in the shops in 2021, 2022. Most of the newer guitars, for example, don't have rosewood fingerboards. They have different pickups. You can get different styles of Les Paul. You can get other Epiphone models. They tend to all have coil split options as well. So they are incredibly versatile. But again, you'll have to check them out and see what specifications are on the guitars and see which ones work for you. At the end of the day then, if I could only own one of these instruments, well, I'm never selling my Les Paul, that's staying with me. But if I was buying one again, if I wanted a guitar purely for extra versatility, if I was going to be playing a set list where I required every single sound ever, just one guitar to do all of that, I'd pick a Les Paul with a coil split. But if you are asking me what guitar I would buy in 2022, based on my heart over my head, based on my gut feeling, based on what I'm enjoying right now, I'd go to Yamaha and say, can I swap the neon yellow for a swift blue one, please? And I'll try that one out. And what I might even want to do would be to go up a few hundred euros or dollars more and try the standard model as well, because that has different switching options. There's a P90 model as well as a humbucker model. And that might be something else to try out in a future video. But stick around with the channel if you want to see that, because that should be coming Coming later in the year. I hope you've enjoyed this comparison then between the 2022 Yamaha Revstar Element and the 2014 Epiphone Les Paul Traditional Pro. If you're still around, write down there in the comments for me which of the guitars you preferred and why, and I look forward to having a little discussion with you guys down there, as we always do. And hey, if you're still watching, please consider giving this video a like and maybe even subscribe to the channel. That really does help me and it helps us build this little rich words music community of like-minded guitar fans that we're starting to build here. If you want to watch a similar video by me, there's a couple of suggestions being made here and here, or you can click on my little face in the corner up there to subscribe to the channel. But that's been it for today's video. I've been Rich for Rich Words Music, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.